up until that fateful night on the 25th of March in 2017, a night that changed everything for residents of New Ferry and Port Sunlight. Christopher Power was living in one of these listed buildings. Now in a 107 News special, he shares his experiences both during and after that night. One oh seven news. Now this is um, this is the edge of Port Sunlight near the edge of New Ferry, and of course that is close, very very close to the site of the blast on Saturday, the twenty fifth of March. Uh, this is the house of Chris Power. You're standing here. This is where you you, you escape from the back on the, the night of um, the twenty fifth of March. Absolutely. Uh, it was about twenty weeks ago now when that awful blast happened. And the thing is that when you hear a blast, you initially think, what could it be? Could it be a bomb? Could it be an explosion? So I wasn't aware. So as you can see here, the blast had a great impact upon all these houses. But it wasn't until 10 days later that I realized the true impact of the blast. But if we scan around, we can see some of the damage. We can see the slates well, you come off. Yes, yes there's the slates, yes. We can see uh, a yes. lot of the windows came in at the back and the front. Uh, now, my own conservatory uh, has to be replaced. Yes, so they can see the windows up the top. Uh, but it was a frightening experience. So I came out of this door and I started to panic, thinking it was initially a car bomb. So I started to run up here and I could hear people screaming, shouting. There was debris everywhere. Uh, you could still see remains of that if you look around. There was flashing lights and alarms going off. So I got to this point and I realized I'm going to have to stop because there was huge crowds of people here. And it was on this corner where I saw a family. I ran to the family and I realized then that it was an explosion. And the explosion came from the furniture shop over the road on Boundary Road, which is just around the corner. Mm -hmm. yes. We have all these houses with boards up, Stephen's still now, and this is the site itself that is, well, the road's been reopened, the uh, the building now has been, the remains of the building where the, the roof was collapsed at 45 degree angle, that's completely been cleared away. You can see the immediate damage to the terraced houses on Underley Terrace there as well. Uh, it's still at that stage. So here we are, we're at the foundations now, and this used to be the furniture shop, and on top of the dance studio, and on the 25th of March, uh, 2017, at quarter past nine, this is it, the explosion. It was a huge impact. And as we look around now, we can see the impact of the blast on the businesses, on the residential homes, uh, port sunlight, port sunlight. But if we just scan around here, we can see what damage it's done. This was no ordinary blast. This is something that was vast. Now, a few weeks ago, the government said no to supporting New Ferry because they think it wasn't a national incident. I'll leave that up to you to, to think about what is a national incident? What is a disaster? Who sets down the criteria? I can say this, no one has to die in order for the government to step in. So we can see here the amount of damage. It's horrific. The slates, the, the broken windows, now, sadly, from Griffiths onwards, most of those shops will be demolished. That's a sad thing, because most of those businesses are family-run. They've been there for years. You can imagine how they feel. You can imagine the pain and suffering. This is nearly 20 weeks on, and still, we, the victims of the blast, the businesses, the families, the children, we still suffer. It's not just emotional. It's physical and structural. So why did the government say no? It's a question that everyone wants to know why. So as new ferry and Port Sunlight, we will re uh, reunite. We will come together and continue the fight. We will do our best to make sure that people in the UK and around the world know that new ferry and Port Sunlight will rise from the ashes. We won't be forgotten. So how can you help? Well, there are many ways you can help. First of all, tell people that this was not a national incident. Fill the petition in, the petition 
that we can use to go back to the government to say, please look at this again, because we are suffering, we need your help. Or support people by going to new beginnings. The town team, Paula from Money Matters, and donate if you can. But just remember, I was a victim on that night. I still have flashbacks. It's painful, it's sad. So please, let's have a look around at more of the damage. And then you say to yourselves, was this a national incident? So as you can see, this is Port Sunlight. It is a tourist attraction. People all over the world come here every year to a village that is renowned for its beautiful gardens, its museums, and the, the pleasure of looking at the architecture. But on that night, sadly, some part of Port Sunlight was damaged. Now, these are listed buildings, which means that we have to apply for planning consent. And it's only then that we can start to rebuild and repair the damage here. The slates, the windows, the doors, beautiful houses, but sadly damaged in that blast. We've got the shops a bit further up. The good news is that some of the local businesses have now moved back into their shops on the other side. But there are still businesses who are out. They're looking for premises. All because of the explosion. I wonder what went through the minds of those children from the dance studio on that night. They'd left and it was, wasn't long uh, ago afterwards that this explosion happened. They come here and you can see along here the left memories of, of the dance school. These are children who have been going to these classes for a long time. And it's sad. It's sad to see this happen. Now, thankfully, the children and the dancers, uh, dance teachers have got a temporary place to, to rehearse and to learn all about their craft, whether that's singing, dancing or acting. But isn't it sad that uh, how, how, you know, how something like this can just destroy many lives? Um, T-shirts. We've got shoes here. It's just a sad reminder of that night. Let me tell you something. When the government send ministers here to look around, you would think that this, this would have an impact upon their lives. This would touch their hearts so that they would go away and say yes to supporting New Ferry. The answer, no, they didn't. They came here, they looked and they said no. Why? I mean, I often speak to lots of people who visit here just, just to see the damage and they walk away and they are affected emotionally. So why government, why did you say no? Are they continuing to say no? Is it complete? There hasn't been any change on this. No, absolutely not. So what we're going to do, we're hopefully when they come back uh, after having their break, we're going to get another petition together which is a parliamentary petition, which needs about 100,000 uh, signatures, then that will mean that we can take that to the Houses of Parliament where it will be debated again. We shouldn't have to do that, but we're thankful for people like yourself, Michael, and the local press and the media who come down here quite a lot just to remind people that New Ferry won't be forgotten. There was a time um, after the blast when this whole road was completely covered in bricks, in glass, we couldn't get through here and the council have done a great job to open this road again and you're probably wondering why, why cars go very slowly, not just because it's a bend, because they want to see this for themselves and what it's done to our lives. They see it all the time, it's just, it's just that the, um, what's interesting is that it doesn't look much different here, it's, um, it's not been... I mean, these houses will probably have to be demolished. It's such extensive damage. Absolutely they said right. that they would. Absolutely. Um, but they, things aren't. Many things aren't looking much different at all from just after the blast. No, and that's all because it takes a lot um, to, to get this um, cleaned up. It takes a lot, such yeah. as planning consent. Then there's the planning of 
regeneration. There's the funding, there's the waiting for the demolition of what's behind. So it takes time. Of course people are stressful. People are still displaced, uh, including myself. So yes, it's going to take a long time before we rise from the ashes and people are back in their homes. Um, again, it's just devastating to see the amount of damage the blast did. I mean, we are now moving away from Port Sunlight into New Ferry. And you can see the extent. It's not just here. It Especially went right up here into the precinct of New Ferry. You can see a board on the window of the first of this of this section here. You can see you, you, um, the pub is heavily damaged and the, the blast was held during when a light band was playing. And the work is still going on. Yeah, right a, now. a lot of these shops were damaged in the blast. So some of these local businesses have moved onto the other side. Some will stay and they're working very diligently. So we can hear the noise. We have got the um, Cleveland Arms here, which is yeah. run by Anne, uh, who was a victim of the blast. And work is going on, you can hear it now. It's going on right now to restore it now. The charity shop is... Yeah, we've got the Dutch Bros. Uh, Baxter's Meats were originally on this side. And they've now moved over. There's boards there as well. Yeah, absolutely. So it shows, and this is quite far away now. Yeah, we're, we're moving distant. up now. Yeah, we really it's, um, Because it's... But the other thing as well is that the blast and the extent of the blast came all the way down here as well. This is something, and this road has the, where the community, um, there was a community fundraising day on a Sunday. It yes. on these buildings up here. Absolutely. Um, so, so some of these, uh, this is Grove School coming up, and these are um, Grove Square. So some of these houses were also damaged, uh, and people having a, a, ter a sort of terrible time at the moment. So yes, you are right. There was a festival here, uh, really to raise the spirits of New Ferry, and uh, it, it was a, it was two days where people came together and had some fun. We had the deputy mayor, uh, I had the privilege of showing him around, and I think it needs to happen, things like that, so that people know that although we're stressed, although we're anxious, we won't give up the fight. So you're saying that the effects were coming this far away even where we are now? It's yeah, just absolutely. I think if we turn the camera around, that's, uh, that's Grove School. Let's see that, yes. Yeah. yes. So um, the blast happened. Some of the roofs at the back uh, were shattered. If we go down here, actually, we can see. We, we couldn't get in from down here because it's blocked up. No, but that's, I mean, that's distant. Yeah. And also the impact, the sound of the blast could be heard uh, quite some distance away. I've met people who were in different parts of Wirral who said they heard the bang. It was felt in Neston. Oh, it was heard in Birkenhead. It was, I think it was heard in North Wales where it just, um, you've got a direct sound wave, haven't you? You've got a direct, um, so. so. As you can see, it's cordoned off here, but all the roofs, you can see most of the roofs here and just beyond were also damaged in the blast. Uh, and there are people that lived on top of those shops and they were involved in the blast. What's, what's good is that on the night of the blast, people came to help. There were people running into the rubble, dragging people out. Sadly, so many people are injured, some seriously injured. But let's not forget the community spirit. The people like the off-duty paramedics and the other people that ran around to help. The community church, Live Church, St. Mark's Church, Everyone came together on that night to help and support the victims of the blast. We're very grateful. Very grateful. Down yeah, here. let's take right. a walk to the house now. Um, one talked. of the things I like to talk to people about on the night of the blast is how it felt and what happened a few days after. It's very, it's very easy for people to watch in the media um, and see something in the press, but when you come here for the first time, you can see for yourself, the, it has a greater impact, I believe, certainly psychologically. I mean, throughout my life, I've, I've looked in 
newspapers and I've seen things uh, in documentaries or in the news and often when I go to the very place it touches me even more so this was my house so it's boarded up at the moment so on the night of the blast the window came in and the glass went right across the floor of the living room to the kitchen and I got terrified thinking it was a bomb I came outside that front door after going outside the back and I was terrified my legs were like jelly and I slumped onto the floor uh, on a nearby or by a nearby lamppost there were lots of people running about it was great to see people knocking at each other's door the sad thing was that 10 days later when we were allowed back in most of our furniture was written off and disposed of including our clothing and toiletries that we were able to salvage some of our other stuff very emotional really because it was like time stopped and when we went back in everything was as it was as though it frozen in time so it's very emotional really it's actually Mother's Day the next day after the blast and I remember going in seeing my Mother's Day present on the table as it was on the night so yes it's very very emotional and um, interestingly at four o'clock in the morning in Pakistan their time a lady text my wife who finally I must say got to me because on that night my family were terrified that I'd been involved uh, seriously in the blast and so they were looking for me and trying to ring me and couldn't get through so when they finally got to me we hugged we made up my wife on her phone gets a text and it's from her friend in Pakistan she'd been watching the news so it proves the point it was global on the night it went even to America and it was broadcast in America on the day uh, sorry the evening the blast so we had nowhere to go and we finally did decide to go to my mum's who looked after us and the second day we went to my sister-in-law's on the third day we had another text from um, from our local church who said that the lady in Pakistan and her sister have an empty house so we were able to stay there for about two to three weeks which was great and it was only after then that the insurance company came to us and said we have to find temporary accommodation so we found a bungalow uh, which is in Spittle however there are people still after 19 20 weeks displaced people living with relatives people can't get back in it's just horrendous hotels I mean, there have been you know as you said on the radio interview bed and breakfast and hotels used yes, as well yes bed and breakfast people were being put up uh, people in the church were looking after people people were donating food and toiletries just to make sure that they they, they were well looked after and how long do you think some people might have to wait I mean I know it's some some places you can't go back in I mean it's just it's, oh, it's the end of it it'll yeah. have to be demolished but in some cases could it be could it be that you could go back into some places you know uh, after so, so long it's really up to um, the structural uh, the, the building structure really if it's sound um, and it's not grade 2 listed then hopefully those people may be allowed back in I, I can't answer that but what I can say um, we're not going to see much major work on these buildings until at least October on the outside because again it's all about planning permission so I'm afraid it could be a long long time before anyone in this L-shaped block goes back into their home which is sad which is why as a community we need people to step in like the government Our house was built in 1897. That's a long time. And so you can imagine the devastation for the trust when this happened. Because this is their livelihood. This is what they believe in. This is something they have to preserve. It, it, it is a tourist village. It's a beautiful village, Michael. Um, yeah, I, I'm sad. I'm emotionally sad that this has happened. Because when I stand in that house, uh, with, with 
you know, the contractors and I look around, it's, it's horrific for me. And when I look at the window, sometimes I, 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 I get all emotional because my life could have been seriously over with. And yeah, as you said on the, the radio interview that, that you can listen to as well, is that, uh, is that you just seem to be lucky in terms of you that you'd normally go over to the window and for some reason you, yeah. you seem to know not to, you just didn't do it. And Abs absolutely. <laughs> Generally on most nights I will go to the window to look out if I hear a noise outside. Sometimes I'll stroke the cat or even get up to go upstairs. Yeah. Now if that would have happened on the night, I seriously would have either been dead or in hospital. We had blinds on the window and we had curtains which protected us from that last so, all I can say is, thank God that I'm alive today. Um, we could have lost many, many lives. And you know what? Not one life was lost, was it? Which was, you know, which was quite miraculous, given the scale of this. This, this blast was just seen, uh, it was not just seen, it was heard across the World Peninsula, you know. It was even heard in North Wales, you see this devastation. There were serious injuries, but nobody died. I mean, there were serious injuries in the Chinese restaurants. Mm, absolutely. Uh, um, and, and we're fortunate in a way. But one of the things I tend to say to people is no one has to die. But this actually is why, this is exactly yeah. why they won't give funding, actually. They're, they're using that as the arbitrary marker that because nobody actually died, um, it's le it's, it, they're seeing it as less serious on that basis, even though um, it, it, serious injuries, uh, extreme displacement. So that um, that is actually uh, what has caused this this debate that, you, that you, as you say, we, hmm. we shouldn't be having a debate. It should have just been something we should have got. Yeah. So <laughs> a disaster is when, <laughs> when, when, when something yeah. affects people's lives and also buildings or... Uh, you know what we see around us and that's what happened on the 25th of March 2017 yeah. I don't know why the government don't see that because it's affected hundreds of people not just not just the victims it's it's branched out to families and I think that's sad I agree with you they can't play with people's lives yes people didn't die but let's not use that as a criteria for helping new ferry victims it's wrong what you've just seen today and witnessed as we walked around is not the day after or a week after, it is 19, 20 weeks after and still the government have not stepped in and I'm sorry that I talk about that, it's only because we, we've been fighting for all these weeks with the help of our local MP Alison McGovern and Warren Ward who've done a great job, a great job of of getting things out there to the press and the media and also for Alison who stood up in Parliament and said that we need help so I'm proud to say tonight thank you uh, to, to, to our local councillor and MP and to all the people that have helped you've seen for yourself Michael the devastation of this blast it's horrific and this was a disaster it wasn't something small it is huge and it is global so for someone to say it was not a national incident, I think that is just wrong. So where do we go from here? Well, we have to go back to the government and show them that we will not be forgotten, that we need immediate help, not just for regeneration, but for the lives of those victims who are involved in the new ferry blast. We need help now. Not later, now. Now, without getting it, what are people doing instead? You know, if you've got a if you've got a shop that's out of action, you know, I know some have been able to move, as you were saying. Um, you know, with what what are people having to do though? If, if well, we've got new beginnings at the moment, and Paula from Money Matters, and they are doing their best and the town team to raise as much money as they can to help not just the local businesses but the residents. It's not just about the families being displaced, it's about how to survive, how to survive after the blast. People still need to pay bills, people need to eat, people need to be clothed. There is so much that we need and so I'm grateful for New Beginnings and for Paula from Money Matters and for the town team and for all the donations. We shouldn't have to do that. This is why we're saying, please, government, stand 
uh, with us and step in and help and support us. It's an ongoing thing and we'll have to wait to see. 107 News.